Okay, so here this is the uh, last promise video. This is going to be our third attempt to look at calculating an electric field due to a continuous charge distribution. Um, so we looked at a, uh, a case where we had a line of charge or some sort of like a charged straight rod or straight segment of wire. Then we looked at a, a charged ring and now I want to take a look at a semicircle of charge. So let's get into that. Um, so to start, uh, I'm going to start with a similar kind of diagram as we had before. So I'm going to start by drawing some axes. So let's say here I've got some sort of a y-axis and I'm going to make a little bit of an x-axis here as well. Let's see if I can. This is going to be an x-axis here and uh, we've got some semicircle of charge here. Try to see if I can make this look like a semicircle. So here is this semicircle of charge. I'll make it Make it a little bit fatter here so you can see this. So here is this semicircle of charge. There it is. Something like that. Um, and let's say that this uh, semicircle of charge has, has a charge, let's say, plus Q on it. So we put this charge plus Q on the semicircle. So let's try that again. Plus Q. Charge plus Q is placed on our little semicircle, which of course has some radius, let's call it r. So this radius here from here to here, this is um, a distance r. Maybe I'll do that in red. So this is r, the radius of the circle, big r. And this is, um, make this a little bit neater by color coordinating. We'll, we'll go back to put this in red. We have some charge q plus q on our little semicircle. All right. And uh, the question is, what would be the electric field? What is the electric field at a point at the center? What is the electric field at the center of the circle? So right here was the field right there due to this, this, un this semicircle of uniform charge. OK, well, we're going to reason this through much the way we did before, um, which is to say, OK, well, um, each piece of this semicircle is going to contribute to the electric field. So let's start by taking a teeny tiny infinitely small piece of this. So a little a little tiny infinitely small sliver here that we're going to call dq. And we could ask ourselves, okay, well what what E field, what's going to be the the electric field contribution of this infinitely small segment dq? Well, that would be since it's positive, that's going to be a repulsive or an, a, a, uh, an outward electric field, DE. So DE is the infinitely tiny um, field contributed by um, this little element DQ. So um, that's, our, that's our setup now. Um, before we even go ahead, well actually, uh, why don't we just go ahead and put some numbers in here or put, put, some, uh, put an equation down. How, how could we calculate DE? Well, uh, DE we know We've done this a bunch now, so we should be pretty good at this now. DE is going to be equal to K times DQ over R squared. DE is K DQ um, divided by R squared. This comes from the equation for the electric field. But as we did in previous videos, we're going. It, it might be worth pausing to recognize that um, there's symmetry here, right? That this is a circle, and so um, there are going to be two components of DE. There's going to be a component of DE. I'll try to make this a little fatter so you can see it. There's going to be a component of DE going this way. That's DE sub x, and there's going to be a component of DE this way, DE sub y. And you might be able to convince yourself if you think about this. You might be able to convince yourself that. In fact, DE sub Y, the, if you sum it up for the entire circle, this entire semicircle, all the little elements uh, DQ are going to have DE Ys that are ultimately going to cancel. So, that, so the net electric field in the Y direction is going to be zero. And like I did in the previous video, we can sort of argue that by imagining for the, you have this little DQ down here, well there's going to be another little DQ up here. And this little DQ is going to create a DE this way. Right, and that DE in this what direction is going to have a, a a Y component that way, which is going to be equal to and cancel the 
y component of the DE from our original DQ. So ultimately, all of the y components of the electric field go away, and we're just left with the x value. So I'll get rid of these green lines to um, make this picture a little bit easier to understand. In other words, bottom line is we don't have to worry about DEY. It's only DE in the x direction that we need to worry about. So going back to the picture, okay, well, what's the, um, how, how do we determine the x component here? Well, there's um, an angle here that might be worth thinking about, which is, if I can find a, find a color here that's going to make sense. Well, I guess we can do green. Um, there's an angle here that I'd like to introduce. Um, actually, I take that back. I'd like to call this angle our angle theta. There's theta right there, which means that this angle here is also theta, the, the angle from dq. Let's try that again. From dq to the center, this angle here is also theta. And it's that angle that you're in some sense is varying. You're varying that angle as you select each individual dq. So in terms of that angle right there, theta, what is the x component of dE? Well, it's going to be given by the sine of theta, right? It's going to be this component up here. Um, so dE, go back to black. What we're actually interested in here is dE sub x, which is going to be k dQ over r squared times sine theta. And this is this is correct. This is this is true. But we're not we're not done because um, the what, what's what's problematic here is the thing I'm varying is theta, right? As I select each dq, the thing that's changing is theta. Um, but my um, my differential is dq, and so if I have dq and I've got theta, that they don't really work together. In other words, I'd like to get somehow if I can, I'd like to express dq in terms of theta. So can I express this in terms of theta? Get, get into d theta somehow. And it turns out I can do that. And, and, and let's go through the argument of, of how I can do that. Um, maybe I'll do it over here in another color. I'll do it over here in blue. Um, so let's, let's first of all think about this entire ring of charge. Well, this entire ring of charge has charge Q. And the entire ring of charge has an angle. That there's an angle here, it's, it's 180 degrees, or in terms of radians, pi radians. So the entire charge, the, the whole amount of charge, Q, is distributed over pi radians. Well, I can set that equal to dQ, the tiny infinitesimal fraction of that overall charge, um, divided by d theta. Where theta, just so we understand what, what d theta is, d theta now would be this teeny, teeny, tiny sliver of theta that's subtended right here. So this is d theta right in there. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a wedge here. Um, and the idea is by taking dq, you're imagining shrinking that, that angle, subtended angle, down to zero, um, or infinitesimally small. That's what d theta is. So. Um, if you, if you make theta infinitesimally small, you get an infinitesimal fraction of the overall amount Q. So what can I do now? Well, I can go ahead and say, back to blue, go ahead and say d theta, um, or actually I wanna, go, I wanna put this in terms of dQ, don't I? dQ equals, if I solve for dQ, Q over pi, I'm realizing you're not gonna be able to see all of that, I'll do it over here, d theta, D, or dq equals q over pi times d theta. So now I did all of that so that now I can put this whole thing in right there. And now I'm going to have the, uh, the differential will be d, d theta and the thing I'm changing in the equation is theta. So it'll, it'll be a um, calculable integral. So here we go. Continuing on down here, I'm going to give myself a little more room by working down here. I'm going to say d e in the x direction now is, let's go ahead and we're going to say k times q times sine theta divided by pi.
pi r squared d theta. Make sure I did that right. I had a k multiplied by a q times the sine theta d theta and then I had a pi times an r squared in the bottom. Good. I think that looks all right. Okay, so now I have a, a nice expression for um, the, the portion of the electric field I'm interested in, the only portion that's not, not canceled, in this case dE sub x. Um, and I've got an infinite number of these, so let's go ahead and do our integral. So before we do that, maybe we can skip a step by recognizing that k is a constant, q is a constant, pi is a constant, r is a constant. So I can pull all of those out of my integral and I can go ahead now and say that the E field that I'm interested in, E, is going to be k times q divided by pi r squared times the integral of sine theta d theta. Um, sine theta d theta. That's really messy. I'm having a hard time writing right now. Sine of theta d theta. Um, and so then I can ask myself, okay, well, what am I evaluating this integral from? Well, it's from uh, some angle zero to the full 180 degrees, which would be pi. So I'm going to take this from zero to pi. Um, and that should be your fairly easy integral to calculate. So let's, let's go ahead and do it here. Um, e is going to be kq divided by pi r squared times, well, what is the integral of sine theta? Well, that's negative cosine theta. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi. All right, well, let's keep going. And we're going to see this is going to be nice and neat. We're going to get E equals KQ over pi r squared times negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of 0. Okay, well, what is the cosine of pi? Well, remember, anytime you're sort of, anytime you get confused and you don't really remember, um, go back to your little graph of what the cosine function looks like. Um, so cosine function looks like this, right? One full cycle, right? So this is pi down here. This is two pi. Full, full unit circle, right? So pi, it's negative one. So this is gonna be the negative of negative one. So this here is positive one, minus negative of cosine of zero. Well, cosine of zero is one. So this is minus one, minus minus one is plus one. So what do I get? This whole thing turns out to be two. And so I can go ahead and finish by saying E equals two kq over pi r squared. And there we go, we are finished with our problem. We've managed to calculate the electric field due to the semicircle of charge. So that's, that was a pretty tricky one. That was, um, there were some, some tricky steps, um, a little bit of manipulation here and kind of reasoning through um, the math of the problem. So hopefully that was uh, intelligible to you and um, that will conclude our discussion of electric fields.